Okay, this video is going to demonstrate how to install LogMeIn Hamachi. Um, what we're trying to do here is join a bunch of computers together in the cloud. So, let me show you what I mean. Uh, home server family cloud is what I'm calling it, but it could be any server or machine you leave running. Um, so, here we have the machine we're going to install. In my case, it's the virtual machine. Um, Hamachi's left running. And then remote machines, so we're going to have a laptop that's coming in over a Verizon connection. It's also going to have Hamachi. The two will be joined together. The remote laptop will be able to see things like printers on my home network. Okay, that's the gist of what we're trying to do. So let's start with Home Server 2011. Uh, you'll see I have a pristine virtual machine, which has nothing in there but VMware tools, really. No Windows updates, no antivirus, nothing. Clean install. What are we going to do? Uh, well, log me in. The company that owns Hamachi now. Uh, it's a lot easier if you just use the browser and don't fight it. And um, because of the way home servers configured, or 2008 or two for that matter, uh, it's kind of painful to use the browser until we uh, change the setting. So let's just go ahead and temporarily allow Internet Explorer to act pretty normal. Now we run Internet Explorer, and let's go to log me in. Oops, sorry. So I actually want to create an account and um, show you a couple things here. If we go to products, you'll see an uh, overview of their products. At the moment, we care about this one, Log Me and Hamachi. And it says, uh, do we want to create an account? So let's go ahead and do that. United States in my case. All right, that was simple. So now you'll see we're logged in in a fresh email ID here. And we want to start by creating a network. Just give you a moment to read this screen here. And it's given me the basic steps. Deploy, set up, and network them together. In my case, I want to start with, think about this. Last time I rehearsed this, um, I actually had an issue where I missed a single checkbox. So I'm just pausing for a moment to think about what the best approach is here in this screen. Well, if we click the first green button, that's what most people are likely to click on, it says Hamachi on this local computer. Okay, it doesn't ask what kind of network we're joining or anything. It's just saying let's log in and install Hamachi. Now obviously not a great idea to do just a plain run, usually save as, but again, easier with Internet Explorer to just not fight log me in site just for the install. Here it explains that it's associated with this email ID that I'm logged in as. And it's the default install, next, next, next kind of thing. This should install rather quickly. That was pretty fast. All right. Next, there's no network set up, right? So this thing's going to just kind of sit there and hang out. And let's size it accordingly so we can kind of see what's going on. Okay. So we've now installed it. And now after installation, let's go to step two, my networks. All right, so we've got a client locally. It knows this, but it's not attached to a network of any sort. So let's call it uh, or the um, I like that name. Gateway is the network type we want. 
Scroll down. Let me see the let you see the description. Mesh. Okay. Hub and spoke. Okay. But again, I like the gateway. That way, any machine can come in. Ping printer. Uh, it's just seamless, and you actually have an IP address granted, uh, just as if you were at home, even when your laptop has left the house. So, click next. Continue. Okay. I like to approve machines that are trying to come in. And belt and suspenders. If that password was somehow compromised, I want a second password that does not match it. Also, challenge new users or anyone who compromises the account. They'd have to not only get in, they'd have to know your second password as well. All right, select a computer to be the gateway for this network. This is key. Notice um, it cannot be a member of any other network. So this is the, the gateway. This is the single machine they've circled in blue here that's always going to stay running to allow access to these other machines in your home. So we turn that radio box on. Definitely do not want to skip it. Click Continue. And now, notice how easy that was. I didn't have to type anything on the left. It's just working. It's starting a connection, and it's connecting. Now, I'm expecting an issue here where, because I have not tweaked the Ethernet settings on the adapter that's running on this virtual machine, in other words, the physical network adapter that's running ESXi 5.0 in my case, doesn't have promiscuous mode on. So, Amachi can't work in this state. So, for most users who are not installing Windows Home Server or 2008 on an actual physical machine, it'll just connect quickly. In my case, it's just going to kind of sit there. So let me show you the fix. We bring up the vSphere client. We go into the settings of the ESX host. Networking. Properties of the network adapter. Notice I have one physical adapter. This is a typical ESX install. Next, next install. Best practices would really be to have a second network interface and make that promiscuous mode, but I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. So we click on Properties. We click on the V-switch, which is already highlighted. Click Edit, Security tab, and it says Promiscuous Mode Reject. Click Accept instead. Click OK. Click Close. And that's it. Now we minimize that. Immediately it uh, should finish. Maybe not immediately, but it should actually connect this time. Um, last I kind of rehearsed, I think it took 30 seconds or so. Okay, it's alive. Well, that's all on the virtual machine. Not particularly exciting. Um, let me just mention again, the last three minutes where I, you know, flicked that bit on for uh, promiscuous mode, that's a requirement for Hamachi VPN. That's well documented on the web. Um, that step is totally optional. It's just for virtual environments, uh, something similar in Hyper-V or other virtual environments. We have to turn on promiscuous mode on the network adapter of the physical machine that is running the virtual machine that's going to be running Hamachi. Wow, that sounded complicated. But, okay, let's, let's move on. We now need to add another client. It's time to get Logme and Hamachi installed on this remote machine. I'm going to turn off that box. Okay, we're going to log into Logme in here in the browser. I think I might already be logged in. There we go. Go to network. Okay, got to log in again. Makes sense. Our previous connection was obviously broken when we broke the internet connection for a bit there. Okay, we want to go to network this time. Here we are on the Add Client page. So we've got a gateway that's running. We want to add a client. So just to recap here, we're on a machine that's on Verizon. The last 10 minutes of the video or so were really about setting up remote control. If all you want to do is get Amachi going. This is how you do it on the second machine. Add client, log me in Amachi, install it on this computer, click continue.
we happen to be at Verizon 4G speed right now with five bars of signal. Um, click next, next, agree. Tells me the email ID it's associated with, so it already knows that. Default directory, install. Again, this machine is almost a decade old. It's incredible that a one gig machine for memory um, can actually run this at all. Once things settle down um, and the install is done, on anything newer than five years, you won't even notice it, less than one or two percent for the Mach VPN when it's using the network. So it's just minimal overhead and small memory footprint. The other nice thing about it, logging me to Machi, is it just kind of sits there. You can hide it from your tray um, with the standard Windows, you know, customization there. And it just sits there. It doesn't complain. It doesn't pop up. Your connection, network connection or Wi-Fi might be turned on and off or airport mode. It doesn't matter. It'll just reconnect to your home network on demand as needed. Whenever it finds an internet connection, it'll use port 443 to SSL, as create an SSL encrypted direct tunnel to your gateway at home. If that fails to the direct gateway approach, it'll try to do it through um, Hamachi just to find, well, to find the machine at home, first of all, to get to the home IP. It'll go through LogMeIn servers. But once the connection is actually established, I'll show you that it should become a direct connection and they're a free product. Uh, again, like it says, if you're not using it for commercial purposes, we'll allow you to do that. Okay, launch Hamachi. Nothing special has been done with firewalls on either of these machines, the physical machine or the physical laptop. Nothing special has been done about um, router config. I don't even have UPnP turned on. So again, because it's port 443, it makes things a lot easier. Okay, so the client went installed. Got an hourglass here. Let me just minimize the browser. There we go. So it was just patiently waiting for me to do something. So. Let's join an existing network. It's asking for network ID. So let's let's pop back here over to the gateway server. Oh, wrong machine. Hang on. What I want what I meant to do was this. Just minimize that. Okay. So here we are in the gateway. And if we look and log me in and hit refresh here, network, non-members, you see that? So it, that client has already made contact, but there should be a, okay, so we need to make a join request. All right, mm -hmm. so it hasn't made contact. All it is is it knows that account is associated with that client ID. So if we go to my network, and we click on Family Cloud here. This is the part that's not that obvious. There's the ID number we're going to need. So this ID of Family Cloud, put that in my clipboard, head bound back to here, and paste it on that remote laptop. And now we need the password as well. Would you like to submit a request? And it's saying that's pending. We go back over here and hit join requests. And there it is. We accept it. It tells us the name of the machine, what it's for. Click save and head on back here quickly. And we should see it just initializing. So again, this is an instance where you don't have to do anything in the Machi VPN client. Just kind of let it do its thing. And uh, things go easier that way. Pretty cool. Um, again, this first one's a little slower, and then it's also a slow machine. OK, so now let's take a look here. If we click, oops, excuse me, direct tunnel there. That's what I wanted to see. Click details. 
there's my IP address. This is call out. Why? Well, because it worked. Let me convince you. Let's start with IP config. So this IP configuration here is, and here's my home network, 10.10.1 to 141. If we do IP config all, you'll see who granted that information. Let me explain. The DHCP server is my home router. How do I know that? Sorry, I'm paging through pages of uh, IP config all. Forgive me. Bear with me while I get it on the screen. There it is. 10.10.1.141. That's the DHCP server's lease it gave me. The Gateway and the DCP server here are my home router. DCP server is 10.10.1.1. That's my router at home. Um, and it granted me the usual uh, DNS IPs that I have configured for my home's computer computers. So what that means is, check this out, we should be able to log into my home's router, even though I'm not at home. The other things we should be able to do would be like uh, get into one of my home's printers, for example. There's the username password for my router. Um, printer. So it's as if I'm at home in every which way. Um, network shares. All that good stuff that you can do if you're at home, you can do when your laptop's not at home. In this case, on Verizon Wi-Fi. Uh, 